Oh, and I agreed with many, many things you said during, in fact, probably more than than most other candidates um, when you were running for president. But I still would not have voted for you um, because you're an Indian. There is a core um, national identity that is the identity of the WASP. And that doesn't mean we can't take anyone else in, a Sri Lankan um, or a Japanese or an Indian, but the, the core around which the nation's values are formed is the WASP. I, we've never had a president who didn't have at least partial English ancestry, never. Mm -hmm. No, I, I think that that's an interesting tour through that historical lane, but I, I wanna pick on one point you said, which is citizenship, right? Let's talk about what does it mean to be a citizen of a nation? And it's interesting, if a lot of people trip up on this, they'll say, well, it means what you get, right? Do I get to vote or do I get some other claim? And that doesn't really work. Actually, if you look through most of American history, for example, women were citizens long before women could vote, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's not about what you get. In my book, and I think that this is true with the American conception of citizenship, I think it's true of the Roman conception of citizenship, is it's about your loyalty, actually. Yes. To whom do you actually pledge loyalty? And so I think you and I share that in common, actually. I, I, I don't know, I've never asked you this, Dan, but I assume from seeing the things you said, tell me if I'm right about this, you're probably against the existence of dual citizenship as a concept. Is that fair oh, to say? Yes. Yes, you, you and I share outrageous. that in common. Outrageous. It's, it's incoherent. It's not just outrageous. It's incoherent. It's oxymoronic. How could you possibly have a loyalty to two different nations where the essence of citizenship is which nation to whom you had your undivided loyalty? That's what the essence of citizenship is all about. So you and I agree on so much there. But where I, I wouldn't say lose you, but I may fail to fully understand you, is on that axis of citizenship, what does ethnicity have to do with the matter? And, and I think you'd be well served, and maybe this could be a great platform for you to do it, to make the case for why that, what you put it, WASP basis for the American identity. How is that relevant against a backdrop of which you got the WASP seventh generation descendant of some rich guy on the Upper East Side in Brooklyn that pretends to hate this country because it's the cool thing to do versus <laughs> somebody who came here as the, is the kid of immigrants, but pledges loyalty to this country. If loyalty was the access for citizenship, aren't you actually committing a bit of a sin reverting back to a conception of citizenship that has nothing to do with loyalty in the first place. Um, well, I will say many of those seventh generations wasp I definitely hate. I know we have a lot of really, really bad ones. But like I said, anyone can can adopt this. I guess what I what I just said, if any of your children um, marry a DAR, I would definitely <laughs> vote for them for president. It's not so much, it's more, um, President is different. You have to be natural born, as you know, which, by the way, Ted Cruz is not basically on because of what you were just describing. Where is the loyalty? Um, so ambassadors, children born actually in the United States are not natural born. But that's a total sidebar. I'm, I've got it's actually not a sidebar at all. I mean, the fact that ambassadors, kids born in the United States are not citizens is actually an overlooked fact. If the kid of an ambassador from Mexico does not enjoy birthright citizenship, neither does somebody who's in this country illegally. Yes. And birthright citizenship either, <laughs> right? So that's actually a quite important logical chain. But I go back to, forget even the, because you get to this constitutional, you know, legalistic, and I like that stuff, but we'll just put that to one side for a second. But the essence of American identity, I think there's a part of you that believes, I think you basically said so, that, that part of that identity is tied to a certain Anglo-Saxon heritage of this country and that you're more American if you vested into that over the course of generations that are descended from that, rather than somebody who came here with a civic commitment to the country, went through the naturalization process, and then their kids may in some real sense of the word. And the reason I respect you is that you actually have the, so to speak, the stones to be able to say it, is that you think that there's a difference in the status of the Americanness of that person. And that's where I think I disagree with you, but I want to give you the opportunity to air the case for that strand of national identity that I think we ought to just smoke out and be able to have a discussion about? Well, um, the reason I mentioned the natural born citizen is I'm only talking about president of the United States. So obviously the framers thought there was something different about being president, the one man who holds one entire branch of government in his hands. 
Um, it doesn't just say anything about who could be a Supreme Court justice, and they have a little more power than the president, by the way, um, or secretary of state or governor, um, or obviously senator or any other position, but president, and I guess by extension, vice president. That is something that, that the framers did think was it was it was so important that you had this deep generation wide loyalty. And why would they think that? Um, well, as, as many said at the time, freedom is a wonderful thing, but it's a very hard thing to learn. And one of the things and I cite these polls in my book, Adios America, it's it's striking and and depressing um, that lots of lots of our our very best immigrants just do not understand the Second Amendment. They do not get the First Amendment and you take polls of them. You, you know, should you have a right to to bear arms? Should, yeah. should hate speech be banned? And it's it's noticeable that large percentages of immigrants and, and children of immigrants um, really don't get that. And I think that is the point of having natural born citizen only for president, that this is this is a really delicate thing we have this this freedom to, to bear arms and and to and there being no such thing as hate speech and it's just an additional little safeguard here's my question for you on that is because the left is actually very good at using what i call proxy logic i reject proxy logic but the left is actually very good at this they'll say we need diversity in a corporate institution so we're going to select for diversity of thought not by screening candidates for the diversity of their thoughts but by screening them for the diversity of their skin color, which is a really curious thing. If you care about diversity of thought in a boardroom, why do you care about diversity of shades of melanin or the diversity of your, of your X or Y chromosomes? You could have a room full of people that look really similar to one another and think very differently or a room full of people that look really different and think the same, which is much of what you get in corporate America today. So that's what I call reasoning by proxy, where one of the things I've often said to the left is if you wanna select for diversity of thought, screen candidates for the diversity of their thoughts. If you want to select for diversity of experience, screen, screen candidates for the diversity of their experiences, that might be a better way of achieving your stated goal than to use the logic of proxy. So again, the constitutional questions to decide, I think we're talking about a cultural matter relating to national identity. My question for you is, I worry that you may, I say this respectfully, may, maybe making some of the same category error that our friends on the left make to say that, yes, it is shameful that immigrants and kids of immigrants often have no idea what the heck the Bill of Rights is actually about. That the Second Amendment exists not to protect some guy who wants to go sport hunting, but it's the one amendment that puts the teeth in all of the other ones. These are basic concepts that many immigrants, first generation Americans, and for that matter, I can say it from having gone to school with many of the uh, waspy varieties that, that populate places like Harvard too, where I've gone, goes for any sixth or seventh generation American too. It's shameful, the level of civic, absence of knowledge, a black hole of understanding of the history of our country. And, and I guess my question for you is, why solve for that through what I would argue is a pretty poor proxy, whether or not you're talking about a safeguard, if there could be a safeguard to ensure that you have leaders in this country or citizens of this country that have a better understanding of that, I would love that safeguard. I personally believe that every high school senior should have to be able to pass a basic civics test, the one we ask mm -hmm. immigrants to pass before becoming a voting citizen of this country, before you cast that ballot in a ballot box, you better darn know what branch of government the president leads. And yet, you actually have more people would fail the test that naturalized citizens are likely to pass who aren't even naturalized citizens. Why not solve for the actual target that you and I both care about, which is loyalty and an understanding of what you're actually pledging loyalty to, rather than using what I would argue is a left-like false proxy target that you use to solve for the same thing? It isn't really true that that the seventh generation wasps are voting worse than than the immigrants. Um, one of the problems with 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 the immigrants we've been taking in, um, actually, probably any immigrant, but definitely ninety percent of legal immigrants come from the third world. Um, they one this they're used to authoritarian governments. They block votes. And every four years, I have to hear about how, no, I think we're going to take the Hispanic vote this year. I, th I think we're going to get the Asian vote. No, you're not Republicans. Every election is decided by slight movements of the white vote. Now, the fact that the white vote is, is that close 
yeah, okay, I hate 50% of them, um, but they're the ones who, who, you know, change their mind and look at the different candidates. Um, it's much more easy to boss around people who have come from an authoritarian culture. Um, and yes, take your point that this is at least for this one position, president, you are looking at something other than um, just what the person actually believes. But you know, nobody really knows what a person actually believes. So why not have a fail safe? I want to hear you say it. And I'd also be more comfortable if you, if you, you're, you're third generation and have some, some English or, you know, British blood in you.